Coming up on Techzilla, our top tricks for Windows 7, slot music versus downloading music, avoiding reruns of your favorite shows. So people, please heat up that KCD and throw on some guac, because Techzilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by Squarespace, Click it or ticket and GoDaddy.com. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla, hands on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most of the gear you already own. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about Twitter, where to use Cat6 cable instead of Cat5, overclocking your toaster or the finest oysters on the West Coast, we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll stalk someone who does and beat the answer out of them at close range. Yes, I don't like oysters. You don't? I don't like, I, I tried to eat an oyster. Wait, no, what's it? What are the other ones? Mussels. I tried to eat those too. I know they're different. I know they're different. Don't give me a hard time about the, the difference between oysters, oysters and, well, and mussels, clams. Mussels, if they're not done right, can mussels. be a horrendous experience. I just can't get into it. I we really wanted to like it. We were doing a tech show, though. We should, you know what, we'll, we'll do, I know a place to take you for shellfish. It'll okay. be amazing. I was just making small talk, man. It was good small you talk. You kind of push me. <gasps> I'm the one who's been waiting here for an hour. Sorry. For your allergy-ridden mug to show up. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't be sad. Be happy. Hey, tell me about pelican cases. You love them so much. You talk about them all the time. But I just don't get what the big attraction to them. Oh, God! So pelican case is a reinforced plastic case filled with foam that you custom fit to whatever you put inside of it. And the really cool thing about it... There wasn't a computer in there, was there? Oh, yeah. Oh. Best part? It wasn't my computer, was it? No. Okay. No, no, no. no. <laughs> There's things, the thing is, though, that computer will work just fine when we open the case, which is why I love Pelican cases and Otter boxes, which are like Pelican cases. They just tend to be a little smaller. <sighs> So that was um, that was exciting. I well, got my my heart going a little bit. <laughs> Look, will you ever see anvil cases like you know bands on the road have anvil cases full of gear? Yes. Pelican cases are like anvil cases for people who take cameras and computers and video equipment all around the world. I they, know that from my wild decade as a roadie for Guns N' Roses. You know, I knew you looked familiar. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, so end of this month, Yeah. it's like, I, 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 I finally figured out what I'm doing, like it involves an airplane flight, Can Jam, which is HeadFi.org's amazing annual gathering for headphone enthusiasts, and the Maker Fair are both on uh, May 30th and 31st. In the same area? Uh, Can Jam's down in Los Angeles, I was oh, going to go to Can Jam, and I was like, you know what I figured out, I'm going to fly down to Can Jam Friday night, do Can Jam on Friday, <sighs> fly back Saturday night, excuse me, do Can Jam on Saturday, fly back Saturday night, Night, and then uh, taking my son to Maker Fair. Uh, I always, I always go to Maker Fair. They're, I haven't missed a Maker Fair in San Francisco in years. They're awesome. But Can Jam sounds really yeah. fun, but that's too far. I can't, I can't do all that traveling in one two-day period. So I mean, I, I do flight. that crap all the time. All it's that true. day trip traveling, like it just, it's too tiring. It's too much. If I don't have to do it. I don't want to do it. I will bring back the report from Can Jam. Right. Rumor that's has fine. it new headphones. There's going to be some interesting stuff about uh, headphone amplifier designs. Mm -hmm. If you've ever remember the Chumoy amplifiers. Yeah. Those were actually a HeadFi member with one of the people who did that, or oh, HeadWise. Oh, fantastic. In any case, HeadWise or HeadFi, now I'm going to get completely slaughtered by an email. <laughs> Don't worry about them. They're not really listening or paying attention, are they? Yes, yes, they are. But well, they actually, guys, <laughs> In any the correct case, answer is. Both HeadWise and HeadFi are awesome forums for people who are into listening with CANS headphones. Excellent. So May 30th is Can Jam and May 31st is Maker Fair? Actually, both are running on both oh, days. Oh, they're both two day, the same two day things. Oh, overlapping geez. on top of each other. All right. Like a peanut butter sandwich. Well, before we fire up the first question, let's talk about an annoying aspect of Windows 7 RC1. Um, it expires June 1st, 2010. It's like a free year of use. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, starting March 1st, 2010, your PC will shut down every two hours. <laughs> You'll get a notice two weeks before that that says it's time to buy a real copy of Windows 7 or go back to Vista or XP, so you should have plenty of warning. We got a few emails about this one, people being like, it's going to shut down every two hours, and Gizmodo wrote a whole big thing up about well, it. Well, it's like Nagware from hell. Oh, that's real bad, to just shut it down. I <laughs> well, mean, no, it no. is the OS, so. You get two hours, and then it shuts it down. Those precious two hours of life. Uh, you so know then what? how long does it stay? Can you turn it up? Do you just have to keep rebooting and then you get to use it for another two hours? I assume. Or? I wonder how it works. Does it make you keep well, it off for a while? Well, we can advance the clock and see if that, you know. Oh, 
That's see what smart. happens. That's clever. That's a clever <laughs> way of testing that. We'll do that by next week. <laughs> but speaking of Windows 7, our first question of the day comes from Charles, who writes, can you show me how to dual boot Windows XP Pro 32-bit and Windows 7 RC1 64-bit? Charles. Absolutely. So you've got the, you've got it on that puppy there. We actually have uh, Mr. Chang's legendary test mule, the Sony Vio that has been suffering oh. more than any machine in He's history. He's so dusty here. Let me use my my sweater to dust it off there. <laughs> That's so kind of you. There we go. That's Haji, nice. She's dusting with her sweater on your computer. You owe me a new sweater. First step. What is always the first step before upgrading your operating system? Backup. Yes. Ha ha! I knew the yes. answer. At, at the very least, your most important files, the financial data, your doctoral thesis, your homework your mp3 collection, yeah. your bookmarks, people forget bookmarks all the time, passwords if you save them mm -hmm. on a particular application. So that if things go desperately wrong, I mean better yet, just image the entire drive. So that if things go desperately wrong, you can just, just restart right where you left Hopefully it works off. that way. Yeah, and, and you can actually image your drive for free. If you've got an external drive to back your data off to, just download Macrium Reflect or Easiest, a name I have difficulty saying. <laughs> Either one's free and we've got links uh, in the show notes to the system episode where Roger shows you how to use them. They are awesome tools, they are free tools, you should use them. This would also be a really good time, by the way, before you get too far into this, to download and run Microsoft's Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. That's going to basically tell you what Microsoft thinks of your system and whether or not it's ready to run Windows 7. Oh, that's good. At least I give you a little heads up in case your system is not up to the task. Run for your life! Like, no, sorry guys. Not yeah. so hot. You know, but I mean, you're actually running it on a little tiny atom-powered PC. Yeah, I've got just a tiny little HP Mini 1000. Um, One gigabyte of RAM. Yeah, with the, uh, was it one or two? I don't know. I can't remember right off the top of my head right now. And it's got the 16 gigabyte solid state drive. And Wait. it runs pretty respectably well. I mean, it's not, I haven't had any trouble with it. I use it every day. There's it's a, like my, my living room. There's an HP Mini 1000 in here. Bull crap. <laughs> yeah, but I wanted to see oh. your face. <laughs> like, no! <laughs> Oh, you scared me for a second. Um, but yeah, it works okay. It works fine. For I, I don't do a ton on there. I right. mean, I'm pretty much just web browsing. You're not editing and, video know. on it. No, certainly not. <laughs> Although I wouldn't put it past Mauricio to try that because he has one as well. Yeah, he'll probably try to run Final Cut on it on his Hackintosh. Yeah. Do you want to fire up the second step? Sure. Uh, the second step is to download and burn the ISO of the 64-bit version of Windows 7 RC1 to a DVD. And while you're at it, download a copy of Gparted Live CD and burn it to a disk. Uh, Vista users have the ability to resize partitions inside of Vista, or they can use Gparted. Third step, shrink your existing XP partition by at least 16 gigabytes. That's the minimum recommended partition size for Windows 7. Bigger would be better. Now you're going to create a new NTFS partition in that space and apply your changes. If you want to get fancy, you know, if you're especially in Vista because the tools are inside of Vista, you, you move everything down with your disk manager so that, you know, it's the C that you, if you like playing around with drive letters, go nuts. Fourth step, insert your Windows 7 install DVD and reboot like we've got this puppy right here. Ready to go. Yes. And we're, of course, assuming you've enabled boot from DVD in your system BIOS and finish the Windows 7 install. What yeah, I've got to do next? this myself because I don't have a, um, I don't have an optical drive on the Mini 1000, so I have to get, we were talking about this last week, right. weren't we, the external DVD you drives? You, did, you have one? You know what I was laughing? Because I, I went and bought it because I, I, I'm actually building a, a PC, actually I'm building a PC on the show today, but I was buying the parts and I was like laughing because Central Computer, which is our local computer store that's it's we basically go to because there's nowhere else left to buy <laughs> computer parts, um, and the prices have actually How weird really is that good. to say that in San Francisco there's nowhere else to buy computer parts? Well, I guess parts. there's a couple places out towards my end of the city, but mm -hmm. I can't find them because they seem... Fry's, right? Fry sells computer parts. Yeah, then I gotta go to the Palo Peninsula, Alto. Huh? And Fry's like takes the manufacturer's suggested retail price and doubles it, and that's oh. their price. Not that I'm bitter about fries, but yeah, I've plus heard tax. some nasty things about some of their practices too, unfortunately. Fries, like, like fries, taking you, returned items that are broken, <coughs> reboxing them, and reselling yeah. them. I, I don't, I'm not slandering they've anybody got, here. They've gotten but pretty good about uh, basically like wrapping a big a label around it. Well, no, no it's fries. <laughs> fries, look, no one's going to debate that fries has customer service issues. I think they've gotten pretty good about marking 
stuff that's, okay. that's been sold and returned. Um, and if it's like four o'clock on a Sunday and you need an EEPROM programmer and a bag of beef jerky, two DVDs, mm. a couple of H DVDs, and beef like jerky. you know two dozen resistors, it is the place to what go. What the heck were we talking about? Oh, uh, Windows 7 installation. Oh, right. So I'm accepting the license term to click through. When this reboots, and we'll show you in a few minutes, um, you should actually have an entry for Windows 7 in your startup right next to your Windows yes. XP or your Windows Vista startup. So. Um, would you recommend using an external uh, DVD drive or something, or can you do it from a large thumb disk just as well? People are doing it from thumb drives. I haven't had a chance to do that myself, but... Thumb disk? Did I just make up a... Thumb I drive. <laughs> thumb drive, that's what I meant to say. Thumb drive's good. I I've like got thumb a four drive. gigabyte uh, SanDisk Cruiser that I think might work, I'll but have to I haven't tested it enough. yet. It should, people have been installing it from thumb drives. I have not done it myself, but I understand you can do it. Okay. We'll have to do it. We'll dig we'll up take instructions. We'll take a look. Yeah. Links in the show notes. We're going to let this puppy run, and when we come back, I'm going to build my first PC that costs more than $500 in <laughs> like six years. Getting my Core i7 on, well, basically because I have to render out 175 DVDs and another 600 albums. Let's take a moment to thank the folks who make this show possible. Squarespace, and here to tell you more about them is Revision 3, handsome intern Tyler Howarth. Hey Techzilla viewers, I'm Tyler Howarth, an intern at Revision 3. I'm here to talk about Squarespace, which is hands down my favorite publishing platform on the internet. What I like most about Squarespace is that it's fast and easy to use. It's so easy, you can build a site in three simple steps. One, choose what modules, pages, features you want on your site. Two, pick one of the beautiful templates provided by Squarespace, all made by professional designers. And three, sit back and relax. Your website's all set up, so just play around, add more content, and enjoy. Congratulations, you just saved a ton of money by not hiring a web designer. Your internet cred just went up 10 points. Now, don't let my three-step program fool you. There is a whole lot more you can do with Squarespace once you've gotten started. So what are you waiting for? You can try it free right now at squarespace.com and be sure to use the code TEKZ when you sign up to get 10% off the life of your membership. Welcome to the Techzilla Gadget of the Week, a gadget gear piece of tech we absolutely can't live without with. This week's pick, the Joby GorillaPod. Every once in a while there's a product so ingenious and so obvious you can't help but think, why didn't I think of that? Case in point, the GorillaPod. Joby took a camera tripod, shrunk it, and segmented the legs and neck. What you end up with is a flexible, bendable, take-anywhere tripod, aka the GorillaPod. Except it's kind of like it's got a monkey's tail. You can wrap it around signs, trees, or other objects, then attach your favorite camera, cell phone, MP3 player, or gadget using the mounting plate or suction cup. Now your device is right there where you want it. Plus, by flattening or raising a leg, you can set the GorillaPod down on an uneven surface and still take level pictures from it or wrap it around a branch to take those hard to reach crazy angles. GorillaPods come in several different sizes and colors to accommodate any personality or big honking camera. So if you need a traveling tripod that's compact, sturdy, and super flexible, give the GorillaPod some attention. You'll be glad you did. All right, anybody out there thinking about upgrading to a Core i7 system, you might want to wait a week, maybe two. I just bought one, which means the prices on them should drop through the floor <laughs> any moment Welcome now. to my life. Yes. You it, know, buying the Kindle too, and then a new one coming out four days later. Well. And all that. A much more expensive one coming out four yes, days later. Yes, I know. It may not be as convenient as it looks. I'm not bitter. No, we're not bitter. This is also why I'm a trailing edge adopter normally, rather than a bleeding edge adopter. Right. But wait, wait a minute. Even the cheapest Core i7, the 920, is like 300 bucks. Uh, yeah. How did you manage to build a $500 PC with that little piece installed? <laughs> Would you like garbage rummage for everything else? It looks pretty shiny and new. Well, if you hang outside of the right computer store with a <laughs> stick. Um, actually, no. Uh, I'm actually building uh, a much more than $500 PC for the first time in forever. Ah, right. It's yes. like a power user PC. What's in it? Well, actually, okay, the Core i7 Quad 920, 300 bucks. That's the puppy I'm holding right here. Uh-huh. NASA 6PT motherboard, $236, six memory slots, and some very nice auto overclocking features. I want to thank Lloyd Case over at Extreme Tech for the heads up on this. Corsair XMS 3, six gigabytes of DDR3 1600, uh, 10 bucks. Core i7 works with banks of three. Six gigabytes is the sweet spot. And oh yeah, I got one more three pack of two gigabyte sticks because my buddy Grant has me stoked to see what I can do with that kind of memory on tap. He's caching like everything he ever runs in main system memory. Mm -hmm. And he's extremely, extremely happy about it. It's a one terabyte hard drive. I've been pretty happy with Western Digital lately. This is a Western Digital Caviar Black WE1001. 
a little more oomph than the uh, Western Digital Green drives I've been using for storage devices and like RAID 5 devices. 120 bucks. Here's the part where the hardcore gamers are going to recoil in horror. Kind of. For offloading things like video encoding or playback or physics to the GPU, NVIDIA has the advantage right now with CUDA. It's just better adopted. ATI has their own system, but it's not as well adopted, i.e. there aren't as many applications that are stoked about it. That said, the $110 ATI Radeon HD4770 GPU is the best deal now on a $100 card for 3D. It's got 7.1 audio over the HDMI port, at least the Sapphire version does, and it's something I look forward to testing, not having to use like a secondary audio card to get uh, HDMI my audio pass through. Now, a serious gamer should be looking at $200 to $250 for a card. A seriously $400. serious gamer yeah, is going to easily hit $400 <laughs> or is going to be, you know, gang ganging together cards to render into the wee small hours. I am not a hardcore gamer and I'll probably end up with an Nvidia 9800 GT to help with video encoding because just I want to test it and compare it to this. I has that. Yeah. Well, what is cool actually is is I can also uh, run two of these. The Radeon and my motherboard can support Crossfire, so I can pick things up a little bit. You may mock me in email if you'd like to. Text at revision3.com and tell me why it is evil that I didn't put a faster graphics card in here. Um, I got a pair of DVD drive, 20 bucks each. I'm going to gang rip. Bucks. Yeah, it's amazing how cheap they are. If you get them on sale, it's probably like $8. And there's a third one I'm going to put in. Because with a lot of applications, you can actually just load CDs in. And they'll keep reading like one CD, then the next CD, then the next CD. So it makes you, makes, helps render faster. Oh, and an 850 watt Corsair TX850W. No! Oh, it's just it. the power cable. Keep talking. <laughs> power supply, so I've got enough Ugh. room to upgrade should I decide to get a quote, real graphics card, unquote. And my goodness, do these things stink of long polymer, long, I can never say that word. Mm. Nah, nah, nah. Big long chemistry word, it stinks of plastic. Uh, but uh, Corsair's been getting some pretty healthy reviews, the price is right on this Does it one. Does sound like a jet taking off? No, actually it's pretty quiet. Oh, that's good. Yes, and it's going to be out in the garage anyway, so if it but gets loud, it I can live. will heat your house? Let's not even touch that right now. I'm just, I'm just... I'm, we'll I'm, you should get the case. Oh, the case. The oh, case. Geez. I can lift it up, right? <laughs> the case for putting all this oh, in is an Antec skeleton. It's a review loader from Antec. They sell for 140 bucks online. <sighs> I'll be recycling a basic steel case oh, back in my garage since people seem to put the most amazing vintage steel ATX cases out on the street on a regular basis in my neighborhood. We wanted to see if this case made swapping stuff in and out any easier, and it is certainly stylish, and it has a giant fan. Did you see the giant fan? Oh, I saw the giant <laughs> fan. That is bigger than my head. It looks like something out of a Bond flick. I do have a pretty small head, but that's bigger than it. It's bigger than your head, too. It's a big fan. It's bigger than Roger's head. So, there are a lot of less expensive, expensive options out here. This is, like I said, this is my first power machine in a while, so I'm probably a little enthusiastic, except in the whole 3D gaming corner. Check out ExtremeTech.com's latest $500 PC if you want a good bargain build. Came out last week, built around ATI's HD4770 and an AMD Athlon X2. Now, if you got an older P4 machine, this is going to be a healthy bump in speed for you, especially if you spend like an extra 100 bucks and pick up AMD's Phenom 2 X4 955. That will be a honking boost. In, in uh, processor. Well, I wish you luck. Sir, Thank you. In building this. Oh, it'll be built. This thing. Oh, it will be built. <laughs> it will be built. <laughs> it will okay. be built. It will be running Windows 7, and there will be joy. It shall be glorious. It shall be glorious. glorious. And there's going to be a whole lot of CD ripping. A whole lot of CD ripping. Yeah. Well, coming up next, uh, Santa's slot music and the slot player, slot radio player. Is it the future of portable music or just another dead end? Find out what we learned after a week with Santa's latest music player. But first, wear a seat belt and you're less likely to die. Folks, everybody out there in Texas land, we want you to live. And that's why Revision 3 is joining with hundreds of state and local law enforcement and highway safety officials across the nation. It's all about click it or ticket. We're getting aggressive this time. We're talking enforcement mobilization. We want to cut out the low seat belt use. It is a simple way to reduce highway fatalities. Buckle up day or night. One in five Americans still fails to buckle up regularly. What does that mean? In 2007 alone, seat belts saved an estimated 15,147 lives. An additional 5,000 lives, even more, could have been saved if seat belts were worn at the time of the crash. Do us a favor, stick around for next week's show. Be safe and buckle up day or night. Click it or ticket, people. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, rerunchecked.com. 
TV watching is serious business and nothing else can ruin a perfectly planned evening at home in front of the shiny happy box more than an unexpected rerun. Reruncheck.com takes all the guesswork out of TV watching. Sure, you can look through your TiVo's upcoming recordings to see if a rerun is imminent or even <gasps> look it up in TV Guide, but wouldn't you just rather get a simple yes or no answer? We all love Lost around the Revision 3 offices, except for Roger, so let's see if this week's show will be new. Just enter the name in the search bar and yay, it's new. You can even tell Rerun Check to notify you via email when a new episode is coming. To make matters even simpler, they have a list on the main page that shows some popular television shows that will be new this week, so you don't even need to look those up. And by going to the New This Week tab, you can plan out your entire viewing week based on which shows are new and when they're airing. Check out reruncheck.com and never sit through a lame rerun again, unless you want to. Remember CES back in January? Don't remind me. A lot of products, yeah. no sleep. One of them. I'm tired just thinking about it. Came from SanDisk, the slot radio player, which is clipped to my shirt right now. They sent us one recently, and after playing with it for a week or two, well, let's talk about what we found. Well, let's separate slot radio from slot music because they are different things. Very different things. All of them center on micro SD and micro SDHC memory cards. No shock there, SanDisk is at heart a memory company. Look at this little itty bitty guy, he's so tiny. That's what she said. <laughs> slot music cards are a single album in DRM free, 320 kilobits per second MP3 format saved on a one gigabyte micro SD card. In theory, you can buy them at Best Buy and Walmart. Those are the big partners for distribution. Right. Best Buy and Walmart, who basically sell the, the biggest chunk of music Two in America. Two gigabytes on this little puppy. It's pretty crazy. They actually have 16 gigabyte cards now for like 60 bucks. <laughs> That's the same size as my SSD drive on my freaking netbook. Yeah, but they're a lot faster and they hold up a lot better under operating system oh, use. So here's the thing. <laughs> Slot Radio is a micro SD card crammed with a thousand songs. Pretty wild concept, but it can only be played on a Slot Radio compatible micro SD player, such as this one I'm holding, or with a firmware upgrade SanDisk's Sansa Fuse. Now, the SanDisk Slot Radio player, and I'm going to put these micro <laughs> yes. SD card in the right in way. The right way. Oh. Yes. <laughs> or everything goes wrong. So you put a slot radio card and anything else and it shows up as blank and full. It leaves you like five or ten megabytes of space to write songs to. So 40 bucks gets you a thousand country songs or oldies or R&B hip hop or rock songs or a mix of them all on the disc that actually comes with the slot radio player. They are compressed like satellite radio compressed. Maybe worse, maybe I'm oversensitive. I can see slot music gaining some ground for people that refuse to buy DRM free audio files off the internets or rip CDs. Maybe, but slot radio just seems like one of those ideas that's just going to die. <laughs> what? Sorry, we are talking about whether or not the, the slot radio player is useless without slot radio discs. So, is it useless? No, actually it's not, because you, basically you can put any micro SD card or micro SD8C card inside of it. Um, I think the lack of a fracking skip back button makes it more useless, because it's, it's radio, radio, right? radio doesn't skip back. Exactly, it just keeps playing. We found that kind of frustrating, and i got to say I'm a little worried about the proprietary USB cable. Sure, the iPod has a proprietary USB cable, but you can buy them in truck stops, in drug stores, and like off of tables and mm -hmm. the street in San Francisco. It's it's funny because it's actually not a bad player. With well encoded MP3s or WMA files, it delivered good audio. Nice aluminum case, built in FM radio. Uh, the minimal controls drive me kind of nuts because you can basically move from directory to directory back and forth, mm -hmm. and you can pause and skip forward. All right, so. I just don't buy this whole thing. Yeah. Like, I mean, I guess it's a cute idea and all, but with so many players these days having plenty of onboard memory to store enough music, and then, you know, even the ones that do have expandable memory, this just seems like unnecessary. Yeah, especially since basically all of the online like, sales format, people, like companies. Thing? I don't know. Because SanDisk like wants to sell more memory. It does seem like a little bit of a gimmick. Yes, I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I think I've, uh, both of us. Sandisk, come on. We love you. We love your memory, but slot radio just seems like a bad idea. At least, you know what? The, the upside is at least the slot music discs aren't DRM encoded. They're, That's great. And they're 320K. So you can wipe K. them and use them for something else. <laughs> oh! Oh, I mean, I didn't... Oh, that sounded meaner than I wanted it to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just... I come from the mindset of like going to tons of trade shows and getting thumb drives and being like, oh, I can't wait to wipe all the crap off here and use this as a thumb drive at home. So I, I just have that mindset. I'm sorry. It was really good, though. I would keep that line. Okay. <laughs> well, Whoa. moving on from that, I think we should probably take a video question. This one comes from a friend of yours, I've heard. Curtis. 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 Hi, Patrick and Veronica. I have a question about playing video on the PS3. 
Um, I have some footage edited in Final Cut Pro on the Mac. It's a movie that's um, about an hour long in the DVC Pro HD format in 720-24p. I've exported it as a H.264 and then converted that to MP4 which will play on the PS3 um, but the files, the hour-long files won't play. They uh, get an error. Anything under like 10 minutes I can get to play no problem. So I'm just wondering if the Sony PS3 will even support something that big or um, if there's any other options that I could try doing. Thanks a lot. Curtis! Curtis produces the Desert People series of desert raising videos. Oh, he's a Fremen? He's a Fremen. <laughs> I wish I had a still suit. No, he's not a Fremen, but we've spent a lot of time together driving to races and videotaping in the desert, uh -huh. eating covered with dust and eating tacos. Um, here's the thing, right? The Xbox and the PS3 have some interesting limitations on video file sizes, mostly based on drive formatting. Sometimes, however, they seem to be things that are built into the, the, the device software, its operating system itself. What, arbitrary rules? <laughs> yeah. so I'm so surprised. <laughs> it's it's in, on consoles, no less. Oh. Your best shot is to stream the file over your network. Basically, set up a gigabit Ethernet network between your server, and there's all sorts of different server software that'll work for this. Basically, stream the file over your network to the console. That should work great and get you around the FAT32 and any other file limitations, uh, whether you're using WMV or DivX or MPEG4. I would also try just encoding it in WMV or DivX if it's a file smaller than, you know, if it's a relatively small file, try encoding it in WMV or DivX because my understanding is that the, the recent or latest PS3 firmware upgrade has removed caps on file sizes for WMV and DivX but not for MPEG4. Hmm. It's a little, it's a little kind of fuzzy in there. In any case, you should have no trouble streaming it, which isn't exactly gonna help you get it on the machine itself, but means you can at least hook the machine, or I should say the console, to the network and get it off of the you server. You can see it. You can see it. Which is a good start. We like that. Or you can break <laughs> it into little tiny chunks of video. Which that doesn't can be, sound as fun. Yeah, especially when you, you, well you can put them in a playlist and then wait while they queue down and queue up and queue down oh, yeah. and queue up and queue down and queue up and, I'll stop that now, sorry. Well, thanks for uh, sending that in. If you guys want to make me happy, send us in another video question. Just record yourself in front of a video camera asking a question. Try to make sure it's no longer than 15 seconds. Sometimes we'll let a few extra seconds slide, but, but only if that's going to make the difference between you sending in a video question or not, fine. 17 seconds, whatever. 22 Upload your seconds. 22. That's the top limit. <laughs> no more than that, my 24. final say. My final say. 15 seconds. 15, I'm sorry. Roger's seconds. zapping me with the, the dog collar thingy. It's okay. <laughs> Upload that puppy to YouTube and then email us a link to your fabulous video question with video question in the subject line so we can find them. It's so easy. Try sending us one today. Viewer questions coming up, but before we do that, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com, people. You want to make an impact online? GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names for as little as a dollar and 99 cents. World-class hosting, fast and easy website builders and so much more. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be and worried that their personal and financial information might fall into nefarious hands, the hands of evil. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. You want to score a discount? Try the code TEK4, T-E-K-4, when you check out. You'll save an additional 15% off any order of $75 or more, and you'll be helping to keep Techzilla on the air. Some restrictions apply. See the site for details. Do us a favor here at Techzilla. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. And do us a favor. Use that T-E-K code when you do. You can find all of those codes and all the deals we got at Revision3.com slash GoDaddy. Support Techzilla by supporting our sponsors. Brain Tonic is the world's first think drink. It has zero caffeine and zero processed sugar, but it's quite effective for increasing mental clarity. You can tell I've been drinking it because my lipstick's all over it. The mental focus comes from two herbs and two natural compounds, and it's sweetened only with organic agave nectar. Place an order of Brain Tonic online at braintonic.com, that's tonic with a Q, and use the coupon code R3 for a discount on your order. Here's an email that expands on something we recently covered in a Texilla daily. Surya writes, is there a freeware application or website like keepfit.com that lets you get the audio from any YouTube video and put it on MP3, MP4, or any other audio format? Just the audio. Surya. There's been a lot of like just, just the, the audio. audio questions. Lately. Well, that, I mean, 
If you want to think about it in nefarious reasons. No, no, I just mean like people are like, I don't want the video, I just want to listen to it. They just want to stick it in the, you know, their iTunes or, or take it with I'm, them on the go. I'm not I think arguing it's a motivations, idea. I'm just like fascinated. Well, originally when I first read his question, I was trying to figure out if there were any freeware apps like, uh, like Wiretap Studio or Audio Hijack Pro, like a freeware version of that. I actually used last week's website pick alternative to to try to find one. Oh, funny. But I couldn't find one. They're probably, they probably exist. Um, I just didn't have time to look over the whole internet. Uh, but then some viewers came to my rescue with a couple of sites that'll do it for you. And this actually fits in very well with KeepFit and the other stuff we've been talking about. Um, Arturo and George S. both recommended KickYouTube.com as a great way to quickly download YouTube videos after our segment on KeepFit. Um, but as a bonus, you can also get MP3s as one of your download options. Oh, cool. So you actually put um, Kick in front of the YouTube. So, okay, so you know how it's like YouTube.com slash V equals blah, 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 whatever Giant it is. If you add Kick in front of it, uh -huh. it'll automatically send you to the Kick YouTube page where you can download oh, nice. the stuff. So you don't have to like copy and paste. Or you can just go to their page and enter in the URL there. And if you have Quick Keeds macros enabled. There you go, Sorry. very quickly. <laughs> and Newell recommends Vixie.net, which I've also used in the past, uh, which will also let you download YouTube videos and then save them as audio files. Nice. So they're like, they're like alternatives to keep fit, but they go that extra step in letting you download audio files as well. Apparently, I'm the only one that hasn't caught up on the whole audio video train. Or you can do something really complicated, like using some kind of external sound card to reroute the audio from your computer and then back into a mixer and then back outputs into Audacity where you can then save it as an MP3 using Don't, the lame encoder. You're, you're making my brain hurt. That well, would you could also do be, it. it. It would work. I'm not <laughs> saying it wouldn't work. I'm just saying use the cool little software hack. Oh. Wow, let's not even get into the whole thing. Yeah, I know, I know, we're, I know. But That's why these are much easier. <laughs> oh, and as another hat tip to a previous episode, we had that discussion about surge protectors recently. You which should I'm sure have you them. Remember. You should have them. Lots They're good of for them. you. Or maybe not. Right. They're super important for keeping all your household electronic items safe. Uh, but we got an email that would solve surge problems for your whole house. I like this thought. Ben writes, I work for an electrical contracting company in the Boston area and we deal with a lot of Casablanca paddle fan repair jobs. The primary reason that things like this fail is due to surges in the house. Now it comes to a point where it is impractical to keep purchasing multiple surge protectors so I have a better solution. You can surge protect your entire house. Basically an electrician can install a surge protection system to your electrical panel which would protect anything in the house that runs from that panel. So as long as your wiring is up to code and if it's not you again have bigger issues to worry about it would be a simple solution that would protect the trivial things like computers and TVs and some of the less trivial things like expensive paddle fans. Ben in Belmont, Massachusetts. I like that thought. I like Belmont, Massachusetts. And I've been there. They only cost like three or four hundred dollars. I don't know what the installation costs, but the physical device isn't that right. expensive. Yeah, that's actually exactly what um, Brendan C. wrote in and said. He said, if you yeah. want an extra protection and peace of mind, you should include house surge protectors next time. Like they said, uh, they're only about two hundred to three hundred dollars when installed by an electrician. Cool. Yeah. It's a, uh, I think that would be a big problem solver there. I mean, instead of having all the little ones all around the house, just freaking for $200, $300. Yeah, if, if it's you worth own it to your you, house. If you own your house, that's true, which a lot of people don't. Especially those who live in San Francisco. <laughs> We're waiting for the next earthquake to bring down the property values. Oh. oh. Do yourself a favor, check out Revision 3's newest show, Raffle. We're talking stand-up comedy by people you may not have seen, but are gonna laugh your ass off at. Every Monday, revision3.com slash raffle. I was actually laughing my ass off earlier. Were you? Maybe it should be laughing my ass off instead of rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> For all of you watching, we live on your questions like what does raffle or LMAO or WTF mean? So email GTFO, us. GTFO, Patrick, GTFO. I'm not even going there. Email <laughs> us, digsalutrevision3.com, tech help, product reviews, how to's. You ask us, we'll do it. But we need your emails. They drive the show. Don't be shy. Send them in, techzilla at revision3.com. Or even better, at least I'm partial of saying so, uh, send us in a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your mug on our show. Keep it to 15 seconds, upload to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question in the subject line. And as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Until next time, you've been watching Techzilla.
And here to tell you more about them is one of the masterminds behind Revision 3, Tyler Howarth. <laughs> I just promoted Tyler, like, way up. <laughs> Little known fact that Tyler is actually one of the founders of Revision 3. He's like a silent partner. For anybody that's thinking of... <clears throat> <coughs> Talking, awesome, Pfft, totally redundant. <laughs> I'm glad you got that joke. Because <laughs> I don't think anybody else did. <laughs> <laughs>